So an update on these cars. Um, I started making new wing stays for the Austin. These are the first ones I made just from 3 mil steel. I had to put in this bracing in the middle to stop them flopping around. And these would probably work okay because I've got the balancing that ties the wing to the side of the car anyway. But the problem is I still have to mount a headlight on that. And this is an example of what none of the headlights will be like. Uh, these won't actually be the ones I'm going to use because these ones are offset. You can see the mounting is on an angle. But same sort of pattern. And these are fairly heavy. So the way this works is if we look at the car the the bracket is up underneath there under the guard and the way it's supposed to work is it's supposed to be touching this and there's a plate that goes on here that bolts through this into that bracket and then provides a sort of a sort of little angled piece that the, the headlight bolts to. And that bracket sets the position of your headlight. So that'll put the headlight in somewhere like that. Um, you get to play with the height and the distance a little bit. But this is quite a bit of weight. So all of that on the guard would make it flop around a bit more. So I'm building new ones from this down here. Um, this is five millimeter thick steel and I'm going to make them more Austin pattern which if we look here is more this sort of shape. On the Austin guards it's actually screwed through the side but because the the way I've done my guards the very top of the guard is where this bracket is which means I can actually mount it through the top and I'm going to mount it with these little side lights which I need to finish restoring um, and they'll sit through the top of the bracket and they are level which is good so I'm going to do the same here that light will mount through there and I'm going to finish making up these uh, in two pieces that bolt together like this Austin example and I think bolting them together is better because these things are going to vibrate no matter what. And any sort of welded joint is likely to crack. Um, I have heard of these things when they're welded cracking over time. So with my 5 mil steel that should hopefully be thick enough, um, I couldn't get quarter inch easily. So that will have to do. Um, but then I had a bit of a disaster when I was actually bending these up. So this is my original vise. And... I was clamping up the, the steel to be able to bend it, and there was a little bit of an accident. So that just completely broke in half. Um, and so it turns out you really can't do a hell of a lot without a vise. So I went out and bought myself a new one, and I upgraded to something bigger, because I think a lot of the times having a vise is a bit like having a, having a lathe. You really want the biggest one you can get, because there's always something you want to fit in it that's the vise is never quite big enough. On this one, it was more, not the width, but the, the jaw opening was never, never quite wide enough for whatever it was you wanted to clamp in there. So I upgraded to this, which wasn't cheap, but I wanted something that was decent quality and that's going to last a while. I mean, this one lasted me about oh, over 20 years and it's had quite a lot of abuse. So hopefully this one lasts equally well. One thing I will do is make some soft jaws for these rather than the serrated ones. On this one I actually made my own jaws which are smooth but I think I'll just make some jaw protectors for this one. The other thing I've been doing apart from Austin stuff is looking at the Riley brakes. Now what I have here is a collection of parts hopefully enough to build one working brake system and you can see it's a little bit off a jigsaw um, to be able to figure out exactly how this has gone together I've temporarily set up the torque tube in the car so you can see here 
our the torque tube has this ball joint in the end and it bolts this housing which is which isn't attached to the torque tube but instead the the ball rotates in here this is bolted to the back of the gearbox and this provides the mounting brackets for all that that brake governs um, you can also see from this how how little room there is in the car so this torque tube runs alongside you and of course it's sitting on springs at the back here so this thing goes up and down so there's a there's a tunnel over it of course and you can also see how in this case the torque tube is too long so the rear axle will actually go uh, it's kind of the spring goes from about here to this bar at the back so the middle of the spring is going to be about about here somewhere so you can see how much the torque tube needs to be shortened for that to fit I'm going to wait until I've got the springs and I need to work out the mounts for the rear there and the front and the front must be some kind of plate that gets bolted onto here uh, with a pin coming out of it which is what the shackle goes on so I need to still need to figure out the details of that um, the positioning of it is much like the front it's not actually going to be hard to figure out where it needs to go because if the springs are flat the shackles need to be vertical so from that I can work out pretty much where this needs to go and it's it's about there I think um, when it comes to shortening the torque tube what we have to do is this is sort of pushed and riveted in so you can see the heads of the rivets there I'll have to probably grind these flush punch them out we'll drill them out separate this piece from this piece I'm not sure how hard that's going to be and um, then basically I can shorten this and press this shortened tube back into the housing and then you use high tensile bolts to to replace the rivets so I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do that myself or not um, probably the issue I would have is pushing this into here I imagine this is a tight fit but maybe if I heated this up it'll expand enough to let me do that I'll, I'll have to see um, I can certainly try and take it apart myself anyway but until I know exactly how much to shorten it I, I just leave it how it is uh, oh you can also see I string rack the steering wheel and I've been uh, making it look authentic by basically every time my hands are covered in filth from the car which is quite often you, you sort of you just rub it on the steering wheel um, to give it that sort of patina um, so what I'm going to do is see if I can start figuring out how all this brake assemblage goes um, I've got two of these center pieces you can see the the pulleys for the cable so the, the brakes on the right are all cable operated um, I believe it's one cable that sort of loops backwards and forwards around the car um, this is obviously the handbrake these are the the rear brake actuating shoes which sort of fit that end goes through the back plate and that's the brake cam and I believe these fit into there somehow yeah. again I'm, I'm not entirely certain how all this works um, so I think that goes in there which looks about the right length um, it's going to be interesting anyway trying to piece it all together and these need cleaning up I believe that little stainless steel sleeve on there should be free to rotate and uh, it's not they're all seized up so I'm not sure what I have to do there but hopefully I've got enough bits here uh, to assemble the brake mechanism in the middle of the car and luckily Steve one of the people who's helping me in the UK um, sent me some pictures of how all of this goes together so hopefully from these and the parts book I can sort of assemble this and see if I've got all the right pieces there I think I have the brake mechanism more or less assembled 
and there's a couple of things I'm missing and a couple of things I'm not quite sure of but basically the way this seems to work is the cables go around these pulleys uh, there's a cable that goes around here through a little guide here passes through the cross member and then I believe this bracket fits I can do it can't really get my hands in, but this bracket bolts onto the cross member like that somehow, and there's two little pulley wheels that, if you get this out, if you imagine that bolted to the, the cross member, there are two little pulley wheels that go through these holes, and uh, these pins I think guide the cable around those pulleys, and it's those pulleys down there that then send the cable up across to the front brakes, which will be up here. So you have to imagine a cable going sort of diagonally through there. Um, that goes onto here. The foot brake, this is the brake pedal, has this arm on the bottom of it. And there is this rod uh, with these split ends. And this is the correct length rod. It would go from there through a hole in the in the chassis rail, which I don't have, so I'll have to make that. And it attaches onto this piece here. So this piece, there's a bar that goes all the way through this. So this rotates and it goes through the torque tube mount. Now this, the one of these I have is the wrong length. Apparently there are different length ones of these. And I need a shorter one, or I guess I need to shorten this, because if you look at where the rod goes, from there to there, if I come around this angle, you can see it doesn't match up. So this arm would need to be further along here. Um, what happens when you, when you press the, the brake pedal, the rod that's in here will move backwards and you can sort of see how this adjusts. As that moves backwards, it moves these arms which shifts this piece up and down. And this, I'm missing the, the adjuster that goes on the end, there's another one of these that's supposed to go on here, that keeps that pressed down. And this is what actually actuates the the brakes. So if you imagine that, as these rods pull down, it pushes down on this threaded rod, which moves this whole compensator mechanism in the middle. And that's what pulls the cables that actuates the brakes. Um, these pulleys at the top go off to the rear brakes. And you can see then how this is adjustable from inside the car, because as you rotate this, the shaft moves up and down, and it'll adjust the tension on that compensator without affecting the pedal position. So you can adjust the the pull on the brakes from inside the car. Um, one of the bits that I'm a bit confused about is if we look, let's step over everything. If we look on this side, this is the handbrake mechanism. You can see the handbrake lever. It's obviously a bit too tall for a Brooklyn's. And I believe I'm missing the ratchet that should be screwed onto there because you can see as I press the button there that moves the little pawl and normally that would engage in the ratchet that sits on there. So that's another piece I'm missing. Um, what's a little bit confusing is this handbrake has a, has a pin through it that goes all the way through here through this top bush on the torque tube. And it's threaded here, but this piece um, came off a different mechanism and it had a little bush in there that doesn't fit over this thread. So I think this needs a little bush in here maybe. And then there's a couple of nuts or something that go in here. I'm not sure exactly how that works or if there's meant to be a different shaft that goes through the middle here. Um, 
The handbrake mechanism, I'm not exactly sure how it works. I think it's rod operated. I think a rod screws into that. And as you pull the handbrake, obviously that goes backwards and forwards. And you can also adjust the, the handbrake tension from inside the car with this little lever. Um, and that, that adjusts the positioning of this. You can see this pin goes up and down and that adjusts the tension on that. So you can adjust the handbrake from inside the car. So I believe that's more or less how it goes together. I need to figure out what's going on here and I need to figure out what I'm going to do about getting a shorter one of those. Um, whether or not I can find the correct one or whether this gets shortened, I, I don't know exactly how that'll work. But the rest of it seems pretty good. Uh, one last thing I should mention is these shafts that go through here are hollow and there's a threaded end and I always thought it was so you could put a, a grease nipple on there so you can get grease in around the pedals and I think that is still the case but looking at the parts book and some photos I've got I think there is also actually a, a tension rod that gets screwed on the end here off each of these shafts with a, with a rod in between them and I believe that's there to keep it under tension so that when you're pushing on the brake these shafts can't move in relation to each other. I'm not certain on that, I'll, I'll have to find out.